2003. The interview has taken place in Pampa, Texas. Mr. Griffin served in the Army Air Corps during World War II. And the interviewer today will be Tony Lupo. Where were you when Pearl Harbor was bombed? I was in Alexander, Louisiana. And what were you doing? I was asleep. When I woke up, that's all I could hear on the radio. The Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. How'd you feel about that? Me? I, I was uh, surprised, and I felt then like I would be called in service. I hadn't been long registered for service, and uh, they had put me in class C. I believe it's class C B. And uh, so when I waked up that it was on a Sunday. When I waked up, that's all I could hear on the radio. Japanese had bone pearl harbor. Mm -hmm. And I felt then I said, Well, they got well, I was still Call for me to go in, in service. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, it wasn't long after that, I, I received a letter that I was chose for service. Mm -hmm. And I Well, I was working then at an oak flooring company. Where they manufacture this oak flooring? I was working at one of them plants. And so, well, long after that, before I got call card, and they chose me for service. Mm -hmm. And I went to the foreman and told him I to call in service. Mm -hmm. So he wrote me a strip to get my pay. And so uh, the timekeeper didn't want to pay me all of my money. But uh, I went back to the foreman and he, w he said, what's the matter? And I told him, and so he went in, then had time for to write me another check for all my money because I felt like I wouldn't be able to come back to the job, you know. Mm -hmm. and. So I went, when I was living there in Alexander, Louisiana, mm -hmm. in uh, it was Camp Beauregard, it was there in World War One. Well, they had two more camps there after the World War One. So I went through Camp Oregon, and that's why I received my uniform, Oregon, and I was shipped to Edelton, Edelton Field in Houston, where I take basic training. Mm. And after I finished basic training, I was shipped to Pampa, to Pampa Air Base. They just opening up the base. See, I arrived here on 29th of January, in 43. And 
They just so mean up the camp out there. And I was shipped in here to cook. That's what I did out there. I cooked first. I was cooking at the outfit I was in, the 328 outfit. And, uh, CO asked me one day, did I, would I like to go to Cook and Baker School? I told him, yeah. So they sent me to Fort Seal, Oklahoma, to a Cook and Baker School. And I finished that and came back to the camp. And then they put me the cooking for the cadets, cadet mess hall. When they was flying it at night, he had classes flying at night while I was on night shift cooking for them. Hmm. And uh, that's what I, that's after they sent me from Houston, I think. Elton Field to Pampa Army Air Base. Mm -hmm. And uh, I cooked for the cadets until they closed the base down. And then shipped me to Fort Worth. That base in Fort Worth. I spent one night and shipped me back to Wichita Falls, to the base in Wichita Falls, Texas. That's where I received my discharge in Wichita Falls, Texas. And then I had to go back to Louisiana to report to the local board. And after I reported to the local board, I came back Pamper and uh, waiting for my mustard out check. But the third day after I had arrived back to Pamper, I went to work for the city of Pamper, sanitation department. And so that's why I'm still here. <laughs> I work for the city for 25 years, and they retired me. And that's, that's why I'm still here in Trap. I have a couple questions I'd like to ask you about some of your experiences. Okay. Uh, how about basic training? Uh, what were your, did you have any experiences during basic training that stick out after all this time? Hmm? Do you have any experiences from your basic training that you remember that stick out after all this time? Experience? Yeah, was it was it difficult? I mean, well, the only thing about it, you, <laughs> it, it wake you up so early in the morning, and uh, yeah, that's uh, the only problem. I, I will and see, I was uh, green, you know, and they wake you up early, whole day. You blow that whistle, and you better fall out yeah. if you do. <laughs> but I was blessed, though. I didn't, I'm always, when they blow that whistle, when, you see, before I was shipped to Houston, well, I take a base of training. Um, the guy in uh, Camp Boyga that he had to, told us where we'd be shipped out, and he had given us some ideas what would happen, you know. And the, we was in tents. And they had a big gun <laughs> right behind our tent. And early in the morning, they 
it was a cannon. It, early in the morning, they'd shoot that thing off, and it just... <laughs> so that's how you started your day? Yeah. That's how it started the day. You wake up, and get up, and dress up, and fall out. And man, man, that's it. That thing would it'd go all but it bed just look like it bounced like this. And so well when I got to Houston I didn't have no problem waking up. Else I was, and, and, and when I'd go to bed I'd put my clothes across my Cross me like that, you know, so I wouldn't have no trouble because I knew they were going to wake you up early. <laughs> and I just, when I get up, turn the blanket back, and I just have my clothes. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Now, I didn't have no problem with that because I see something. Uh, he had a tough son, you know. The guy had told me before I left Louisiana, the camp in Louisiana, so when you leave here, I said, you're going to be on your own son. He meant your own color. Mm. And that was a rotten skunk. Man, every time I went to the Rifle range. I tried to figure out some way to shoot him. <laughs> really? Now, so you're saying that he he wasn't colored? Huh? The sergeant was or was not colored? Yeah, he's colored. Really? But he was really he just, just me. Really? Rotten. That's a, when we go to town. You go in the GI truck, and when we get in town. Well, we had to go to the USO and leave our passes in the USO. So we couldn't, you couldn't go no way, you know. Because if you be caught off down the streets down there, MP gonna check you. Why? Because? Huh? Because you were black? <laughs> w was it because it was segregated, or no. why, why couldn't you go anywhere? I don't understand. Well, but you. Without your pass. Oh, okay. See, MP catch you without your pass. You, you same A W O L. You know. Uh, <laughs> well, I have a question now. The military was segregated when you went in. Is that correct? Correct. Did you experience, um, you know, basically were people racist towards you when you were um, going through the military? Oh uh, yeah. Because when I was shipped from Pampa, when they closed the base down in Pampa, and I was shipped from Pampa. Well, they, when I got, I was joined up with another group come out of California. When it went in into a folk work. And then, I was over the group. Well, I, he tried. <laughs> he tried to get the conductor to let me have a berth to sleep in, else he wouldn't. Get, the train didn't get there. But it wasn't until the next morning, and that guy wouldn't do it. Mm. I, so the, this. This guy was in charge of the soldiers. He cussed him out, <laughs> talked bad about him and everything. But that didn't help him out. Really? He said, I, I just can't do it. He said, well, well the, the, the soldiers, when they left California, they, they was in the bushes. He, he could have let me have one, but no, he did that strife and he wouldn't do it. Mm. And so 
I took the gun, so I, I said, forget it. Later, that's all right. So I just ran back in the seat and went on sleep. Hmm. And went on. Oh, yeah, man, it was shocking. I found out one, I was going at home on leave. And, well, you know, we was all together. You know, we was all soldiers, you know. I, like, we didn't we didn't think nothing about it, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, we was all in line together and uh, you know a guy selling tickets, if you wanna go anywhere you better go around I had to go out of that line around the building and go in another place. Mm -hmm. I said it's just a shame. So I, I yeah, I run into a lot of problems, man, but I don't know. But <laughs> it, right there, Alexander and them, he had three camps, one on the south side, one on the north side, and one on the west side of town. And them guys come in there, man. I'm telling you, they they tamed Alexander. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't. It's so good. Go in the places. He didn't like what they did to him. He'd come out and. Uh, and the soldiers stuck together. They didn't care what color you were. And they said, soldier in trouble. So you didn't have, you didn't experience a lot of racism with your fellow soldiers. Huh? So you didn't experience a lot of racism between the fellow soldiers? No. It was typically the town people? It is, that's all. The town people. <laughs> and the soldiers would tell them. That's good. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, before I was drafted in service, I was going to town one day, and a convoy come to the soldiers, you know. When the you're not supposed to break through the convoy of soldiers. And they had them trucks bumper to bumper, you yeah. know. And uh, <laughs> MP got out the lead truck and stopped the traffic. And because it, it, it was, they'd come down the street into the corner and they're going east. And, uh, one guy, other than in the front of the traffic, he stopped, but he kept the ancient up. And MP had that M1 rifle. And he put that thing across his shoulder like that and walked over there and stood up, put one foot on that bumper, that car and stood down with his back to the driver. That car didn't move another day. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just kept an ancient up, man. And he knew better than that. Yes. But then him Peter that walked across and put his foot on the bumper, you know, had one foot on the bumper and nothing on the ground. That M1 rifle was across the lawn like that. Why, why was he trying to inch up? I don't know. I, I mean, he was going to break through. He tried to break through the, you know, the convoy. Really? And then MP was like, we're not having any of this. Uh -huh. MP was like, we're not having any of this. No. Good. Oh, man, no. 
Well, how about, um, you know, after basic training, of course, you went to um, cooking school, cooking and bakery school. Yeah. Could you explain uh, what that was like? Oh, the cook and bake school? Yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> Man, it, 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 the building wasn't much bigger than, uh, it was, well, why did this, what we see in our classroom, but the longer though, about 30 or 40 feet longer, and then for seal, they, they had them big old guns going off over there in the mountains and saying, boy, in that little building, you, you hit them windows. <laughs> it was real nice to, in that cooking. Though. But one thing about it, I already knew how to cook. And uh, if you didn't know how to cook, you was just into it. Mm. Because all they was teaching the value of the food. That's all they were teaching. Mm. <laughs> and so <laughs> they don't. Oh, oh, side then went a load the oh, that's there. He started the cooking. I forget what it was now, but yeah, it's some pies. He was started baking some lemon pies, you know. And he told, called me and said, come in. Finish this. I got to go out here, you know. Well, I hadn't told the man I didn't know how to cook, but he went on like he's gone, and he, he was making a two crust of lemon pie. And so, man, I was just dressing it. <laughs> he said, I thought you couldn't cook. Mm -hmm. He just standing there watching me. He was right behind me, right on my shoulder. And I'm just in that cross up there. He said, I thought you couldn't cook. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't tell you I couldn't cook. He called you out on that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then he, he, oh Lord, yeah, he, he, he then, he was only from then on. He wants something baked. I mean, gruff. <laughs> That's good. I want so many, so many pies. Mm -hmm. and I don't like that. Cause he knew I could do it then. But I hadn't told him I, I didn't know how to cook when I went there. I didn't tell him I didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I guess he just decided I was didn't know how to cook when I come there. Yep. But I knew all about it. And uh, it was, I think it was, it was just a bunch of men in that class and two women. Mm. I think this, uh, and they were wax, you know, and they call them men mm -hmm. wax. Yeah. And that another thing, I didn't have no problems on, on the base. Yeah. And I was cooking for them. I cooked at the hospital mess. Mm -hmm. That was a year. I was cooking at the hospital mess when I first come in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, The wax, they had a bunch of wax, and they ate it, the hospital mess, you know. And they, every day at noon when I was on, see, I was on day and off a day. And every day when I was on, they come in 
there for lunch. They'd come back there where I was, you know. And it was Sergeant, Miss Sergeant didn't like that at all. Really? <laughs> he, he was from Georgia. Ah. And his name was Mays, you know. And then when he knew he didn't like this, see him talking to me, you know, man. Mm -hmm. And he put a sign up there, you know, and nobody at the back there but the help, the kitchen help. So he was upset enough where he put a sign up to keep the women from talking to you back there? Yeah. And one Jeez. one one who acted well, she was a big, heavy son lady, you know. She walked up and read that, and she said, who put that up there? Maze? I said, yeah. <laughs> so the trash. I mean, he didn't put man nothing up there. That's right. She gonna whoop on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she was. But uh, uh, uh. I didn't have no problem with the soldiers and nothing like that. Uh, and the wax, we were just good friends. What about uh, the town of Pampa? Mm -hmm. What about when you'd go into town at Pampa? What did was it was it a uh, was it still a segregated town or was it pretty well, open? Oh no, man, it's segregated. It's yeah. It was a uh, well, the younger people were real, nice, but they had some old old people. Mm -hmm. In the sheriff department, he was, oh, what? What would he do? Huh? Would he harass you? Oh, if he, if he had a chance, those the MPs was on them, though. He had to go through the MPs to get old to soldier. And the MPs in town, uh -uh. I know who one. One night, we got got down from the color soldier. And so we were driving a I can't call the name of that car now, but it was the same as a Cadillac. Like. I think it was built by the General Motors, I think it was. But it had a different name. And uh and the sheriff and his deputies got out there, boy. And somebody had called the base ahead of it. I don't know who called the base, but MPs was on the gate. When the car, when the had car tanked it off the pavement, they waved him on in like that, you know, and he went on in. And they shut the gate. Oh, chef, and his deputy run up there. That's all the fun. So the MPs would actually protect him. Yeah. From the sheriff who was after him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's, you can't. They say, well, you say you can't go in. You just have to go back to town. Said you can't go in. And boy, and they was, had them fortifies on them. <laughs> so in in general, you thought the military, the huh? people. So in general, the people that you served with in the military, the hmm? actual soldiers, yeah, were good and, and relatively fair, with a few exceptions. But when you went into town, you'd run into problems sometimes. No. No. Uh, uh, well, they had some. Uh, down on the south side where the colored people were, they had cafes and things down there. See, well, we blacks, we didn't have to go uptown. Just for that, you know. And we 
didn't need no civilian clothes or nothing like that. And so that is it. Hmm. Now, but <coughs> thing, it's it's better here now. I, you know, it, when did you notice things started to change where there where you didn't have, you know, blacks living in one part of town and they would just shop there and I mean, you know, when were you able to go to any restaurant and not have to worry about where you had to sit? Let me see, I'm <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, then back, it's been quite a few years back, days. I mean, well, the first ones started that. Well, that restaurant is done closed now, <laughs> but it was, I uh, uh, can't call the name of them now, because they left town, left town not too long ago. No, it was the first food. They were the first ones done, you know, letting blacks go in. And um, so now, you didn't go in any of them now. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously right now it's not segregated, but <laughs> I mean, you, you've been around for 97 years. Yeah. I've, I was never raised in an area where things were segregated. I've only read about it. <laughs> and, and it sounds to me like you actually saw it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. And so when I first came in, after I got out of service, yeah, when I went to work for the city, mm -hmm. and uh, I was working for the sanitation department. Mm -hmm. Well, I was working with two guys, two, uh, one of them was helping me dump the barrel and let them drive it. They were brother-in-law. And they were, they were real nice guys, you know. And 12 wheels working at night. So they asked me every night, Griff, what are, you gonna eat? what are we gonna eat at night? I said, it don't make me no difference, man. What are we eat at? He said, well, the driver, he said, well, I mean, think about we go sit in such a place. I said, just since I get something to eat. I said, now, when we drive up there, and they said they can't feed me, mm -hmm. he said, if they can't feed you, they can't feed me. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's go. And so that's, that's what we went. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And when they pulled the night truck off, they them the eyes left here. They said Grip said they let us three stay together. Said, we'll be here. He said, but if they split us up, we gone. And I ain't heard tell of them guys since. I don't know where they went to. <laughs> but they left. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Other than that, I, I was always, you know, ever since, see, I left home when I was 16 years old. And it seemed like it'd be my luck to get a job, work with. Just me and some whites, you know, but I never had no problem with them. Right. <laughs> well, when you think back during that period of your life, you know, World War II, the draft, Pearl Harbor, yeah, dropping the atom bomb, what sort of experiences, when you think back that period, are stick out the most? What sort of things do you remember most clearly? Just in general. My experience in there was uh, the training they give us 
in in the and they, they always told him, told the sister now, if you go over, if you be shipped overseas, what we do doing now is going to be different. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. He said, well, you got to be on, most of you be on your own when you get overseas. He said, but. Over here, so we just kind of give you a little, little training about what you can kind of look for. And I didn't didn't get overseas. This was I got right in Pamela, Texas. Well, but you know what they said at the at the uh, reunion yesterday was was absolutely correct. Huh? What they said at the reunion yesterday was correct. For every one soldier that was fighting the enemy, it took eight people to support him. Yeah. And you worked at an air base supporting yeah. the pilots yeah. that bombed Nazi Germany in submission. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to hear what you have to say. Yeah, yeah. I've had the many cadet they are training and they finished their training and they went overseas. That's right. Yeah. And you were part of that unit? Yeah. And uh, of course some of them went overseas and some of, some of them didn't go. Some of them stayed over here. But I kept them fed mm -hmm. so they was in good shape when they, you know, if they did have to go, mm -hmm. they'd go. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The soldiers need to be fed. Yeah. You don't win wars in an empty stomach. <coughs> well, there's to it. Um, how do you think, or do you think, your service during World War II, you know, being in the military, do you think that affected your life later on? Do you think it helped you in any way? I love it, yeah. It helped me a whole lot. Oh. See, I, I was, like I said all the time, I get. I didn't want to go in the service, but I wouldn't take for the experience mm -hmm. that I, I had. In. Yes, sir. It, it's a good. It was good for me. Okay. And I, I'm a good. Of course, I didn't get a chance to go over. Over then, but. What I did over here, I appreciate, you know, I'm glad I was able to help that much. Mm -hmm. See? Is there um, anything you'd like to add to the interview that, that I haven't asked you or I haven't talked about? I don't know. Is there anything mm -hmm. that happened that, that we haven't discussed that you'd like to mention? I guess what I'm trying to say is this is your chance to tell me if there's anything I left out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't think of him the thing you left out. And then that about it. But one thing I always wonder. I don't know whether you care to hear this or not. It was Five uh, boys. I have four more brothers. And I'm the only one was called in service. Hmm. I never could understand that. I don't understand that either. <laughs> and, uh, and I was this, I remember the second child. He was the one brother old and I was, and I was next to him. And I was the only one was called in service. Wow. They didn't call any of their brothers in? No. <laughs> and I got thinking about it and I said, I, I, I thought about it a long, long time. 
I wondered how come I was the homeless one. And I got to thinking I was the homeless woman away from home working on public job. And the rest of them was at home woman. Mm -hmm. See? And that's the only thing I could figure out to the reason yeah. they wouldn't go. Because maybe they got a deferment because they were farming? Huh? You think because maybe they got a deferment because they were farming? Yeah. Interesting. I, 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 I told thing I could figure out. Yeah. I would have think they would have they would have uh, also drafted your younger brothers too. They, yeah. they didn't. No. Because you would have been what, 34, 35 when the war started? Huh? You would have been what, 34 or 35 when the war started? Oh no, I was in my 40s when the war broke out. Yeah, you have been... In 34, when the war broke out, and mm -hmm. you have been you have been almost yeah 34 when the war broke out, and mm -hmm. about um, 36, 37 when he served, and all your young brothers didn't, didn't go in. Wow. Well, I, I want to say that it, it's been an honor talking today. It really has. I mean, uh, I've, I've learned a lot. I had a lot of questions I wanted to ask you when I found out you served in World War II, and um, I really appreciate you coming down today. So, thank okay, you very much for your you time. Get what you want. Oh, well, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and what we're going to do is we'll, um, let, me, let me turn this off real quick.